Hello friends, welcome to the channel. As we all know the importance of Microsoft Excel worksheet for our routine tasks like preparation of numerical uh, reports and analysis of numerical data. From this video, we will be learning about the basic features of Microsoft Excel and some basic functions that can help us for our routine task. So let's start here. This is the type of interface we are going to get with the Microsoft Excel worksheet. This is the picture that I have copied and pasted in the sheet. So you can simply, if you want to add some logo or uh, some picture, you can simply copy and paste to your Excel sheet. But Excel sheets are not meant for the pictures. They are meant to deal with the numerical data only. So for any kind of reports, images, you should use either PPT or your doc files so let's start let's delete this first now you can simply create a new microsoft excel worksheet by right clicking on any window and from new option you can select microsoft excel worksheet so i have already created one for you with some data so that we can directly move to the demonstration of the functions to save the time and every sheet comes with extension dot xlsx earlier versions we have the extension xls but now we have xls x so this is the same sheet that i have opened over here now next every cell every cell is an intersection of rows and columns so here these are the columns means vertically we can say that we have the column so these are columns numbered alphabetically a b c d e f up to Z and then we have A, 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 B like this type of series A, B, A, K and after A when the A series end then we have the column numbering from B, A, B, B like we have 1 to 9 then 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2 same way. So here after B series we have C, A, C, B so this goes like this and Horizontally, in this manner, we have the rows. So these are our row. These are the rows, and rows are numbered numerically. Columns are numbered alphabetically. Next, at the intersection of rows and column, we have the cell. So this is the cell B. Let me border it for you. So just select the cell you want to border, and this is the option for bottom border. If you want the border on top only, left border, right border all border or only the outside if you have selected more than one cell so for the outside means boundary uh, to create the boundary of that section you can select the border outside option and you can also draw the border draw the border so let's go for the simple all border option here is our cell uh, at the intersection of column b and row number is 2 here the row number is 2. Okay. So here the column is B. Let me write it for you. The column is B and the row is 2. So the intersection of column B and row 2 is forming the cell B2. So this is our cell number B2 at the intersection of column B and row 2. Now you can also check the number of a cell from the name box that is given in the top left corner. Not at the top but under the menu. So here this cell, this cell is numbered B2. You can check in the name box over here. Next, check the number of this cell. This cell is at intersection of column B. This is the same column B but this time we have the row number as 4. So this is numbered as or referred as B4. This is cell number B4. Similarly, this, this cell, this cell is B6 because we have the sixth row for this intersection. So column is B and row is 6. I hope how we can refer a cell is clear. Next part we have how to align the text and how to insert more rows and more columns. So let's see 
here to insert a column to left of B. So simply click, right click and insert. It will insert a new column at the left of the selected column. Similarly, you can insert a row. Suppose we have one row gap between these two cells. So I, if I want to insert one more row, simply click the row before which you want to add a new row and right click and insert. So a new row is inserted. Okay. After inserting the rows, you can see that length of the text is more than the size of the cell. So we can use the wrap option to wrap the text to multiple lines or you can use the shrink option. So let's see the difference between these two options. So simply I am going to delete these extra rows. So you can simply select the row or column you want to delete and right click delete. Okay, so here let's perform the operation of wrapping the text and shrinking the uh, text according to the cell size. For this you need to select the cell for which you want to add these features and you can select multiple cells by clicking on the control key. Now wrap text. So by wrapping the text, the, wrap, uh, the text is appearing in multiple lines over here. Now if you decrease the height of the row like this, you can simply drag the borders to increase the height of the board. Let me border these cells first. So now you can simply see, you can increase the size of row, you can decrease the width of column, increase the width of column. Now if I am decreasing the height of the row, the cell is not displaying all the content, means complete contents are not shown in the sheet. So you can simply right click a uh, double click after uh, this this uh, symbol is appeared like this. Okay. So this will adjust the row height according to the text length. This is very useful feature. Similarly you can do it this for column as well. Suppose I am writing some text over here and and the cell Width is not enough to capture or to display the complete text. So you can simply uh, double click when this arrow appears and the, the column width will adjust automatically according to the text, text length. So these are the basic features that you must know. Next, we have already seen the uh, insertion deletion. Now let's see the options if you want to shrink the cell shrink and wrap. So here select all uh, or we can select all by control A or simply clicking on this section. So here let's select this column and right click or simply click on this alignment option. If you are not having this menu option if you are using the earlier versions then simply right click and go to the format cell option. Here we have the format cell. So by selecting this option go to alignment or this is the shortcut for this the same this uh, same menu so wrap text will wrap the text to multiple lines now if you want to shrink the i don't want to wrap the text but i want to shrink the cell uh, means i want a fixed row height for every uh, every row but i want to shrink the content text. So simply choose instead of wrapping the text I want to shrink the text. Shrink to fit. So it will shrink the text to fit to the column width. Okay. So this is the difference between shrink and wrap. So if I again choose to wrap it will wrap the text to multiple rows. Done. Now let's, let's uh, move to these options, these are the orientation options, means vertical orientation or and horizontal or, uh, orientation. So if I choose to vertically align to center, so the text will move to center vertically. Okay, if I choose top, so it is moving to top, top, center and bottom. Similarly, these are the options for the horizontal alignment. So left center and right. 
these three options are for left center and right option right so according to your choice you can make center line vertically as well as horizontally so both options are available here next you can also choose suppose i want to uh, refer some data that should be uh, aligned vertically means i need to write the text vertically then uh, suppose i want some date to be written vertically then this is the option this orientation you can rotate the text you can choose any type of orientation suppose i am choosing this so date is written in this manner okay so all you can practice these options similarly this is the option to change the font style you can change the font color from this this option to change the font color this is the option to change the font style and this is the option to change the font size suppose i want to increase the font size like this okay next this is the formula bar where you can write the formula we will be writing the formula later but here you can write the formula and every formula start with an equal to equal to symbol next you can insert any number of sheets in your workspace okay so i have inserted sheet 3 and sheet 4 so let's move to sheet 1 again and you can also rename the sheet 1 suppose first sheet this is my first sheet now you can also color the tab so we have the options right click on the sheet name and you can uh, choose to rename delete insert and move or copy you can copy the complete sheet and you can also provide a tab color suppose you have multiple sheets so to highlight some sheets suppose this sheet is highlighted with red and i want to highlight the sheet number 4 with some other color suppose green color okay so you can give a name and uh, as well as color to your sheets now next thing is how to automate the things means how to automate the numbering or formulas so let's start with sheet 2 you can move the sheets around like this here i want to move the sheet 2 after sheet 1 okay sheet 3 after sheet 4 so you can simply drag the sheet to arrange them in order you want so here i am at the sheet 2 so this is sheet 2 where we have the list of students with some marks for subject 1 subject 2 and this should be subject 3 and i have not formatted this uh, sheet yet so let's start select all i have on the font as times new roman font style font size 12 and let's insert a sequence number means how many students uh, do we have so let's insert a sequence number so i want to insert a column so select on the column right click insert here we have sequence number Or serial number okay 1 and 2 now i need not to write the complete numbers okay let's see i have written 1 and 2 let's align them horizontally and vertically center now i have written 1 2 1 and 2 are having a difference of number 1 and i need not to write the complete sequence or serial numbers for the complete list i can simply write two numbers only two numbers and you can drag this formula it's like a formula that we are adding numbers at a different with a difference of 1 so simply drag and it will automatically insert all the numbers okay but it's also tedious to drag the complete drag up to the complete sheet so we have a shortcut option simply control z or undo what we have done earlier and select the formula means two numbers written by you at a difference of 1 1 so 1 and 2 and move to the uh, right bottom corner of the selected portion 
and here you need to double click simply as the plus option appears simply double click it and it will automatically fill the complete list up to the covered area means we have filled uh, up to this point so it will automatically fill the number with a difference of 1 up to this point. I hope this is clear let's try something else suppose I have written numbers at a difference of 4 2 and 4 ok so here we have difference of 2 2 and 4 next number should be 6 next number should be 8 ok so simply double click here or drag here double click will not work because we have a blank column over here so if we delete this column delete this now the double click will work perfectly this. So all the numbers are automatically inserted at a gap of 2 means all the even numbers 2, 4, 6, 8. So you can choose any type of sequence but there should be a sequence means we cannot write 10, 5, 6. So this is not, a, this is not forming any sequence. Okay. So be logical all the time. Now let's align them center. Select all the column and this. Now let's start performing some operations like sum and count, max, min, etc. Let's start with the first operation that is sum. So there are multiple ways to perform, a, uh, perform an operation. So every operation start with equal to. As I told earlier, every operation start with equal to. So equals to. equal to now suppose I want to add these three numbers these three numbers so this is cell number F2 let's see I want to add F2 F2 you can check from this name box F2 plus I want to add F2 with E2 and with D2 ok so I want to uh, add these three numbers so there are multiple ways to perform this so we will see all the ways then we will conclude which form is best so here simply write you can write d2 plus as we know the cell numbers and you can see the matching colors appears over here means the cell is selected with the same color the text is written over here in the formula bar Okay, D2, E2 plus F2. Okay, so the colors are same. Blue, red and purple equal to. And the result is 74. Okay, and you can simply double click. And the formula is repeated for all the cells. Let's repeat it for one cell only. This 87. Now 87 is not the sum of D2, E2 and F2. It is the sum of D3, E3 and F3. And how we can check this? Simply click on the cell and you can check in the formula bar. It is adding D3, E3 and F3. It has not taken the earlier version because we have just copied the formula. Okay, or simply drag the formula. Let's drag it again. I am dragging the formula for other numbers as well and they are adding the respective numbers like 64 is the sum of these three values. If you select 64, you can see it is the sum of D8, E8 and F8. Okay, And you can see the color. D is written in blue color. And E is written in, E8 is written in red color and the third one, third cell is indicated in purple color. And the formula is not repeating the same values but the new values. Okay, so you can simply double click and the formula is calculated or sum is calculated for all the numbers in the list. Done? So let's try to 
do the same thing but in different manner now we are going to use inbuilt function and the function is sum simply write sum and now we need to specify the numbers so the numbers were d2 e2 and f2 this is the second way to add these three numbers okay numbers you need to define the number separated by comma and the same color uh, scheme is used blue red and purple and the result is here and you can simply double click on the corner with this plus sign and the formula is repeated for the complete list control z again we are doing it in some other manner but here the problem was we need to write each and every number manually manually i had written d2 comma e2 like here d2 e2 and f2 right but if we have a um, uh, numerous numbers means if we have a list of 100 1000 you cannot write the complete numbers separated by comma so what is the best option so the best option is to select the range sum equals to now instead of defining the number it always shows you the hint so instead of defining the number you can select the range here i have selected these three numbers and you can check the formulas d2 to f2 it means it will add the numbers from d2 including e2 to f2 d2 to f2 and covering all the cells within this range it's 74 okay now next thing you can also use this sum method to add multiple ranges like i want to add these three numbers so you can select the range vertically horizontally or in any manner and next range i want to select is this and the third range i want to select is this okay so you can also specify instead of different numbers separated by comma you can specify different ranges separated by comma here the result is this now you can also specify let's see another option you can also specify range uh, not only horizontally vertically but we can have a choice in uh, choice of any section range of any section like i want to add all these numbers okay so the range is starting from this cell 21 21 is d2 21 is d2 and the range is ending at f8 so f8 so this boundary is created from d2 to f8 you can see d2 to f8 this rectangular section is selected by this range okay so range can be specified vertically horizontally or in both okay next let's see some more example here suppose i want to select this complete range so here it goes from d2 to d11 okay d2 to d11 comma i can add multiple ranges now the next range i am specifying is a rectangular range okay boundary is rectangular from e2 to f10 and simply close the bracket so you need to uh, be careful about the format means if we have a bracket bracket we need to write equal to and after equal to the function name next we have a bracket and the multiple values numbers range or any criteria you are providing uh, according to the formula must be comma separated and at the end you need to provide a closing brace closing bracket okay and simply enter next so coming back to our formula i wanted to add the marks of one student only so the my range is this only so you can select the range or you can type the range but it's better to select because chances of mistakes are less if you are selecting the range d2 to f2 and enter now simply double click with the plus sign and the formula is repeated let's see it again this 
and the formula is repeated and the sum is calculated for all the student now the benefit of doing this in uh, doing this calculation in excel is let me give it a header that if you are changing any value suppose i am changing it to 0 so the total is updated automatically you can see if i am changing it to 22 the total is updated automatically right so this is the benefit of performing the operations uh, in excel instead of performing them manually next total is calculated now uh, if i want to calculate the highest marks in a subject or if i want to calculate highest marks of a student uh, from all the subjects so now if i want to calculate the highest marks of a student subject wise means the student has scored highest marks in which subject so for that we can have the max for that we have the function max the student marks maximum out of them subject from all the subjects so range is same but this time i am using the function max you can also specify the numbers uh, separated by comma or you can have multiple range like sum or you can specify one range from which you want to select the maximum number so here is a maximum value 34 same way the maximum marks of maximum subject marks of the of each sub student are calculated then same way we have the min so for min we have the method min so min function has the same format numbers separated by comma or the range so i am providing the same range here and double click to get the minimum for all the students so this is our calculation now uh, after this if i want to count the subjects count the subjects of students means how many subjects are there how many subjects are there so you can use the count method how the count works equals to count bracket start and next how many cells i want to count these cells the same range i have provided and the count is 3 and the count is going to be same for all students okay so these these are the method that are already provided to you but you can also uh, modify these methods or you can also use these methods to build your own formulas for example if i want to calculate average marks of average mark of each student then there is no such formula already provided to you in excel so you can use this sum function that was your sum function you can use the value of sum and count to calculate average okay so let's hide these two columns you can hide the columns right click and hide okay if you are not requiring those columns suppose you have added so many details so you can hide these uh, hide the columns for your convenience and now i want to calculate average marks of each student and there is no such formula so simply uh, as average is going out of the cell so you can double click to adjust column width so here you can use the formula from the other formulas like i want to divide the sum by the count of subjects okay so here the sum was calculated earlier in g2 and the count was calculated in j2 so here is the average or you can also write the formulas for this suppose i have not calculated sum and i have not calculated count so you can club all those formulas like sum of these three numbers i want to divide it so this is the divide symbol by the count so you can club multiple formulas count of these three numbers okay the answer is 27 now you can see 
this is a float value so i am getting multiple up to six decimal places you can always format your sheet so you can provide border and you can also set the uh, number of decimal places for that you need to go to font and from font you have the option number okay you can uh, choose the number of decimal places here so i want the result up to one decimal place then select one decimal place and the values of the cell are number okay and now i am getting the result up to one decimal place okay you can select two decimal places and so on so you can use the already calculated values for your next formula or you can simply write the complete formula as per your convenience next thing why i am writing the formula of count why i have not used the fixed count as 3 because count is going to be 3 for all right but if the new subject is introduced for a student then we need to change the complete sheet so it's better to always write the formulas or calculate the values using the formulas instead of writing the fixed value so you you should not write 3 you should always get calculated the value of count or for any other formula suppose i am going to insert a new subject simply i have inserted a column and subject new subject is subject 4 and the range for the sum formula is automatically upgraded earlier the range was d to f for this formula the range was d to f and now you can check the range is d to g2 accordingly all the values of all the formulas are updated you need not to update each and every formula it is automatically done okay so this is the beauty of excel now if i am writing the marks as 36 now i am writing the marks as 25 so automatically the count is changing automatically average sum are updating similarly the maximum and minimums are also updated and hide the column and you can check if i am writing it as 34 so the max and min values are also updating side by side okay you need not to change the range of any formula you need not to change the values at, at all so it is automatically upgrading the uh, all the calculations next you can also color your rows suppose this is the sum you can mark it with different color you can provide border and so on now let's see uh, the count if and sum if functions uh, for that i am going to insert new columns so inserting any number of column in between are not going to disturb these ranges these ranges are done so suppose i want to count or perform a sum if and only if the value is greater than 30 so we have the option sum if i want to add if and only if the value in the range is greater than 30 okay you can specify any criteria and you can see the hint over here first we need to provide a range so the range is this d2 to g2 now comma and next we have the criteria next you need to provide the criteria and the criteria are always provided in double quotes so write double quotes and bracket close but before closing the bracket as i had provided no criteria no condition so it is showing zero okay now let's write some criteria i am providing the criteria that we need to sum the numbers in this range from d2 to g2 if and only if the number is greater than 30 if and only if number is greater than 30 so here is the value how many numbers are greater than 30 we have 34 and 36 and the sum is 70 next simply drag the formula so here we have only one number greater than 30 
and for this we have only one number greater than 30 that is 34 so we are adding the numbers if and only from the range from the provided range if and only if the number is greater than 30 or you can specify any criteria less than greater than equal to okay everything is possible but uh, careful about the syntax criteria should be provided in double quotes only okay next we have the count if equals to count if now equal to means so though count earlier we just counted the number of subjects means the cells within the range were counted but if you want to specify a condition for the count suppose i want to count the cells having value greater than 30 so the formula is going uh, is going to be count if next specify the range i want to count the numbers from this range now the criteria is if the value is greater than 30 i need to count if the value if and only if the value is greater than 30 sorry i skipped the double code yes so the syntax should be should be accurate otherwise it will show you the error so here the formula is written that we need to count if from this range if and only if the value is greater than 30 so how many values are greater than 32 in this range and how many values are greater than 30 for this range are only one so simply drag this so we are getting some and number of values greater than 30 here so in this way you can modify the formula like we calculated the average from sum and count formula and here we calculated the sum with the condition count with the condition okay next we have how to select best values suppose for some times so let's hide these columns let's hide them suppose i want to calculate the sum of best three best three values or just delete this column this was extra so suppose uh, from these three subjects i want to uh, find out the sum of best two numbers of a student so best two so there is no built-in formula to perform this action how we can do this simply write the sum formula so you need to think about this you need to trick the formula according to your requirement i need to find out the sum of these numbers but this will provide the sum of all three numbers and i want the sum of best two means maximum two numbers within this range so how we can do this you can simply write sum of the uh, all three numbers subtracted by subtracted by min minimum number within this range what will it provide it will provide you the sum of best two numbers and best two numbers were 34 and 26 and 34 and 26 sum uh, the total will be 60 because for many institutions we need to extract best out of uh, suppose we have sessional test we need to extract best two marks of a student so how can we perform this by adding all the numbers and subtracting the minimum uh, number from the range and it will provide it uh, provide you the best score best two score of the student and if you want the best one then you can simply select the max max number out of this range okay i hope uh, this was useful to you and in next video we will be starting with more options like conditional formatting print titles and filters so these filters conditional formattings are going to be very useful till then bye and take care